It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. Tuesday evening, November 3rd, 2015, cruising our way through this first week of November. Hope you guys are having a great week with us here so far. Another busy day in the markets. Lots of profitable trading opportunities today. Had another great day in our trade room. Hope you guys are having a great Tuesday so far. In tonight's newsletter, Crude oil is bullish this evening after buyers had their way, took out the whooping stick on the sellers today. Bulls all over the bid here this morning and into this afternoon, which means we'll be looking for a deep pullback and try to get some bear traps on the opposite side of this market for the next round of buying opportunities. We're bullish on crude. We'll see how long that lasts. We haven't been bullish very often this year. We'll see how long that lasts. We're going to plan for the black gold tomorrow. The E-mini S&P also very bullish after another strong session from the buyers. No surprise there, right? I mean, we saw a spike in channel yesterday, so we were definitely expecting to see another bullish session again today. Our plan is to keep buying those deep pullbacks to trap the sellers on the wrong side of the market for the most reliable opportunities tomorrow. But just a quick notice, though, we got a previous high of day, a big round number, and all-time highs on the S&P on our radar screen right now. So it, tomorrow might not be as easy as the last two days were here on the S&P. We're going to plan for the S&P. How about the gold? Gold is bearish this evening. Sellers were too, or excuse me, sellers were very, very strong on the way down today on the yellow metal. So we expect to see a pop higher, trapping in some buyers before selling it back down tomorrow. What a week on gold. Boy, ever since Janet Yellen's commentary out of the FOMC last week, this thing has been pinned to the floor. We're, we're, we're not going to change much for tomorrow, but we get a good chart to look at for tomorrow on gold. And of course, on the euro, euro is bearish with a spike in channel and a flag, and a bear flag tomorrow or, or this evening. So we're, sharing, we're showing clear seller control on the euro this evening. So our plan is to look for profit-taking corrections up off today's lows for the next selling opportunity tomorrow. We get a plan for crude, S&P, gold, and the euro. Lot of big moving markets this week here so far. Most of these markets are due for some pullbacks. They're due for some profit-taking, and we have a plan to be ready to capitalize on those tomorrow. Before we jump into today's charts, though, I do want to remind you guys to make sure you're watching our video on our trading blog here at Sideways Markets. If you're watching the video on our YouTube channel, just open up the description of the YouTube video and you'll see a link to come over to our, tra to our trading blog. Upper left-hand corner, you can download uh, a copy of our free pass, grab a copy to attend our live trade room. If you're not a member here at School of Trade and you'd like a free pass to our trade room, upper left-hand corner, you can grab that free pass on our blog. Lower left-hand corner, right above my ugly mug, you'll see a spot to join our nightly newsletter mailing list. All I need is your name, your email address, and then check your email. I'm going to send you a verification email, and you'll always start. You'll always get those emails from me every evening when the newsletter is ready. Right below the video tonight, you'll see a spot to download all the charts that you'll see me using in tonight's video. How nice is that? Have those ready for you tomorrow. And, of course, over on the right-hand side, you can register as a trial member here at school, the School of Trades. Not the same thing as your free pass. We can read member reviews, get more information on membership, and we usually have someone standing by 24-7, 365 to restart our, our chat server there and get that back on track. But we almost always have that chat server running for you guys. So don't forget, no question too big or too small here to help you guys out. Real quickly here before we jump into the charts, tomorrow is Wednesday the 4th. We do have a bunch of important news tomorrow. We have got an inventory report on crude. We're going to be hearing from the ADP employment report at 815. That'll be a leading indicator for Friday's non-farm payrolls. We've got Red Star News International Trade at 830. What I'm really watching for tomorrow, though, is, is we have that Janet Yellen testimony tomorrow at 10 a.m., and then we go into that inventory report for crude at 10.30 tomorrow. So just looking at this news calendar for tomorrow, get to it early tomorrow. That's going to be really the name of the game tomorrow. Again, you know, Janet Yellen does have that semi-yearly testimony on car, right, at Capitol Hill, but, you know, it's it's difficult to say how the market's going to react to it right now. I would anticipate, though, for crude traders, we're definitely going to want to sidestep that news tomorrow at 10.30. I'm always going to sit on hands from 10.15 to 10.45 tomorrow morning around that inventory report. Guys, don't forget, we open up our live trade room tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time, and we'll put together a plan for you guys trading around that news. So 
Crude inventories tomorrow at 10.30. Janet Yellen on the microphone tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, and then again, tomorrow afternoon, we'll be leading into that FO, the uh, uh, non-farm payroll report on Friday morning. So we'll have a plan for you guys in the trade room tomorrow morning, of course, uh, as we open up our trade room for all of our members here at School of Trade, and we'll trade around that news tomorrow. Let's start out here this evening with our crude oil futures market. As you can see, nice, strong, bullish trending day today had the two try rule in effect very early this morning on crude so we knew we were pinned to the upside we focused on buying the entire session this morning uh, again we broke out of that trading range that we talked about yesterday didn't get any sign of buyer failure and of course two tries up to the upside we were literally in the two try rule as of about 9 a.m. this morning. So it was a very clear bullish environment from the moment we started today on crude oil. In this trending market, crude bullish this evening after buyers had their way with the sellers today, which means we'll be looking for... Uh, Looking to buy deep pullbacks with bear traps for the next round of buying opportunities. Buyers will surely take profit after such a strong bull day, and sellers are going to likely confuse this for weakness. So we'll be waiting for sellers to fail around those key support levels below. And of course, that will be our safest bet for the next buying opportunities. So right now, we can see volume is definitely showing the most amount of volume traded right around this 47.20, 47 even area. That's also yesterday's high of day. That will also that will be a very interesting area here. That's really where we're looking for that deep, deep pullback to come back to. Measured moves up, measured correction back, and we'll be looking for that next pullback all right, to give us into some buying opportunities here. We see a bull channel up, full rotation. So if we don't make that lower low, we'll continue to buy the lows of this channel. But as of right now, though, You'd expect a big day like this, though, to see some profit taking. So we're going to be looking for that measured correction, back off that high, and looking for the buying opportunities. Again, that deep pullback, that deep correction. And what we're hoping for is, is to get those sellers to confuse this now, right, with bearishness. And, of course, when they fail, we'll be there to buy right into those sellers' stop losses. You know, we haven't seen bullish markets back to back to back over the past few months here on crude. So are we going to be able to put together another big uh, bullish day tomorrow? We'll have to wait and see. One thing we know, though, for sure, though, is on a trending market, measured moves up, channel rotation up, right? No surprise here. No surprise here. Very bullish market. And now we're looking for that measured correction back down right measured correction a b c d on the way back down sellers will of course confuse this with bearishness and we do expect those sellers to try and fail for the next buying opportunity on the way up right again got my eyes on this area right here we saw a bear flag you know usually when you see these flag patterns Usually, they end up pulling back here a little bit deeper before going higher. That really just, again, additional bullishness that we saw today uh, in today's crude market. So definitely no doubt about it. We're definitely bulls here on crude. The only question I have right now for tomorrow is how, how low will we go, right? How far back will we pull back? And really what you want to wait for tomorrow is that deep correction, wait for the sellers to try to sink their teeth into this short and it might be successful right we don't know but we do know though that this bullish market right now if they do fail that's going to be the easiest money you're going to make tomorrow here on this crude market guys favorite market here this cl right now definitely come in and see me tomorrow morning at 8 a.m when we open up our trade room we'll trade that market live in real time together now Moving on to the S&P here right now. The S&P 500 is bullish after another strong session from the buyers. No real surprise there. We had a bullish spike in channel yesterday, so there wasn't any doubt about that. Uh, our plan is to keep using deep pullbacks to trap those sellers on the wrong side of the market for the most reliable opportunities. Remember, this is the S&P, right? So traps are very prevalent on the S&P. You're competing against the smartest, most, most highly capitalized minds in the world when you trade in the S&P. Now, we got some challenges here. This is this looking at this chart and just talking about this right now kind of gives me a little bit of indigestion, right? Because we can see we've got a big round number at 2100. That's also yesterday's high 
And so we know there's probably going to be a little bit of tomfoolery happening around that 2100, right? So we know there's going to be big round number, previous high of day. Yeah, we're definitely going to expect buyers to take some profit, pull back, retest that area. Possible gap fill. You'll notice we got a gap here at that 2094 half. You know, here's what I expect to happen here on the S&P. I definitely expect to see a retest of that previous high of day, a retest of that big round number at 2100. And then from there, we're going to have to see where we go from there. As you can see, the volume is very well distributed up the, up the ladder here today, right? You can see a lot of volume pretty much all the way up. We're really not looking very top heavy right now. Um, started off in a range here. You know, if I had to guess right now, I definitely am confident to say we're most likely going to pull back to test that big round number, to test that previous high of day, but that's where I would guess that's where the shenanigans are going to come in. I would imagine a trap low, fill that gap, and then we get our next leg higher here. You know, we may end up just collapsing back into that 2094. We're definitely bullish right now. I definitely expect some buyers to take their profit after they just dipped into the cookie jar a little bit too deep today with an overshoot of that bull channel high. So we're getting the overshoot at the opposite side. You know, we're probably, like I said, we're probably going to end up back down around this previous high of day, back in this area around that big round number. If I had to guess, I would guess it's going to be real sloppy around that area with that gap just begging to be filled down there. Jump down, fill the gap, trap out those sellers, and then right back up again. You know, right now, this is the same plan for tomorrow's session as we had for today's session of the S&P. Just wait for the price to pull back, wait for the sellers to try to sell the retracement, and buy right into their stop losses. That's exactly what we did here on the S&P early in the session this morning, right? Wait for it to pull back, wait for the sellers to try to sell it, buy right into those stop losses, right? Sell it, buy right into those stop losses. I mean, this is relatively simple here. Just be very careful if you're trying to sell this thing right now. You know when we go down to that 2100, it's also the prior high of day. Like I said, it kind of makes me nauseous just thinking about this area. It's going to be a challenging area around that big round number. So when it gets tough down here, don't go forcing anything. Wait for a breakdown. They're going to try to fill that gap at, at 94 half, and then that would be a perfect area for that big neon sign sellers to come in. And if they fail, it should be it should be a relatively quick pushback higher there. So look for that deep correction back lower. Little bit of shenanigans around the 2100. Possibly a breakdown to fill that gap before we catch those sellers on the wrong side of this market and take this back to the upside. I'm definitely still a, still a bull right now, right? I mean, literally, until we break below that low at 2089, and even then, this is just one big range, right? So, I mean, really, it's very difficult for me to justify saying the word sell right now. Just stay patient, just like yesterday. Stay patient, wait for the sellers to try to sell the next push down where they fail, that's where you want to keep buying those failures because you know they're going to find a way, most likely, if I, had to, if I had to trust my gut right now, my gut tells me we finish this year off right up around those all-time highs here. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if we didn't. It's very, very bullish out there right now for these U.S. equities. So, again, stay patient here on the E-mini S&Ps. Yep, buy into those seller failures during this deep pullback. Next up here. The market that receives the, the medal of, of participation, right? You guys get the, the award here on the sellers for this gold. Wow, what a, what a run these sellers have had. So looking at the gold market, the yellow medal is bearish this evening. But the sellers were so strong on the way down today that we expect to see a pop higher to trap in the buyers before selling it back down again. You know, we're talking about these traps a lot today, and that's because we get a lot of strong trending markets. And, you know, new traders, rookie traders, gamblers love to call tops and bottoms. And they're very unreliable trying to call a bottom here. You know we're going to get some profit taking here. But again, trying to trying to predict this thing to go all the way back up, very, very difficult right now. I'm always 
going to trust the direction of that trend here until I'm proven wrong. Four consecutive days of strong selling after last week's FOMC announcement. That doesn't surprise me. But what does surprise us right now, what does really make us think is this aggressive selling today all the way down. I mean, look at this thing just grinding lower, right? We're used to seeing channel rotation. And then look at the pathetic, the, the, I mean, this is pretty impressive. I mean, I don't know whether to call that pathetic or impressive, right? It's either the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. I mean, we didn't even test the moving average. It grinds, I mean, think about it. It grinds all the way down, chunk, 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 chunk. I mean, it's almost like the sellers just said, whatever, keep selling, keep selling, keep selling, keep selling. They didn't even take a break on this thing before it comes right back down again. You know, normally you'd see something like this followed by a, a correction, buyer failure, and then you take it right back down, right? That's how we make the easy money on moves like that, but there was no correction. So this leads me to believe that all these bears are hanging out in their short positions right now, and that tells me that every time this thing goes up, you wait for those buyers, try to buy that pullback, and just keep selling it right back down again. I would imagine every intelligent seller right now is going to be doing the same thing here on this gold. Our plan has been the same the last week. It is not any different tomorrow. Our plan remains the same. Every time it goes up, we're expecting the buyers to try to buy the pullback, right? It's going all the way back up again, and it might, right? I can't predict the future. All I know right now is, is where the most reliable trades are going to be. That's all we ever know, right? And as professional traders, we don't try to predict. We don't try to get lucky. We try to find the trend, anticipate where counter trend traders would be getting in trouble, right? And we know what's gonna happen here, right? Buyers will try to buy that pullback. If they fail, we'll sell it. Buyers try to buy that pullback. If they fail, we'll sell it, right? You're basically waiting for price to get up. If I had to guess, I'd guess around this 24 to 20 even area, right? You can see that last little bit of volume was, uh, was spiking right here. So we'll be looking for that price again, go up, Pullback fails, selling it back down. That's pretty much been the plan on the yellow metal for the past week. It's been like this for the past few months, right? Been very bearish overall over the past few months. So, again, look for those bull traps. Look for those bull traps. Uh, wait for those buyers to take the bait and sell right into those stop losses as you guys are, are staying patient on this. And another very good example of that in the euro here. The euro also another bearish trending market here wrapping up on the 6e wrapping up on the euro futures this e right not to be confused with the forex pair euro is bearish with a spike in channel as well as a bear flag showing us clear seller control this evening so our plan is to look for a profit taking correction up off today's lows for the next selling opportunity tomorrow we will be paying close attention to that bear flag that finished up today's session because that bear flag is oftentimes one of the most confusing things for a new trader. And we know that's where a lot of traps are going to happen here. So we definitely see some very strong bearish sentiment here. We get a bear spike in channel. Heck, that spike in channel even overshot into a flag. I mean, how, how much more do you want to tell you this market is bearish? Oh, I know what more you want. How about some volume, right? Volume is definitely weighted towards the downside right now. And of course, we're looking for in a trending market, measured moves lower. We got the measured moves lower, measured corrections higher. And that measured correction higher, that's definitely where you want to be looking for tomorrow. You know, same thing on gold, if, it, if, it, if gold can actually get its act together and get up off these lows at all. But we know right now, though, you can easily see it. A, B, C, D, that puts you into that measured correction area. And look where it happens to put us in this big round number area. So this is a beautiful spot here for price to get up. Again, test that big round number, right? Test some of these areas of resistance overhead. That's where the big neon sign comes out that says, buy me, buy me, buy me. And of course, where they fail, we want to be selling right into that failure. Remember one thing, when you're looking at a flag, flags are all about traps. Flags, flags are one of the most difficult price formations, at least in my opinion, 
because it's very counterintuitive, right? It's a bull channel after that spike down, right? This is this is a bear flag. I know it looks bullish, and again, that's why it's so confusing, and that's why you've got to think traps. What's going to happen is price will jump up. Un undoubtedly, this will be some sort of measured correction point, right? It'll jump up. The buyers now will try to buy that next pullback thinking that it's a bullish move, right? Again, it's very, it's tricky. It's, it's, it's sneaky like that. And then, of course, the wise sellers, they know it's a bear flag, and so they're waiting to sell it back down. Okay, that's, the, that's where we're going to be looking for the first opportunity tomorrow. If we don't get on that one, the next step is going to be we come back here now, buyers try to buy the low of this bull channel. You know where this is going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they try to buy the low of the bull channel. They fail. And this, of course, gives us a nice round of profit targets as we push back down to those lows again. Right? So flags are all about failures because this is going to confuse the market. It's going to make, this, it's going to make those, those retail buyers think we're going all the way back up. And guys, don't get me wrong. We could go all the way back up. There is absolutely no reason why this market can't go all the way back to the high. So as always, wait for proof. No guessing. No gambling. Do not put it all on black right now. What I'll be waiting for is, is for that price to go up. Right, that deep correction, let those sellers who clearly had control today, let them take their profit, let the buyers have some fun with it, stay patient, wait for them to try to buy that pullback, and then when you see proof of failure, that's your green light to sell. We do not blindly sell anything without proof. And guys, don't forget, if you need education, if you need a strategy for finding that proof, what are you waiting for? You can cut your learning time in half. You can save yourself tens of thousands of dollars in losses. I mean, I blew more than six figures on this stuff, gambling my money away, wasting my time before I finally got serious and learned from a true mentor. Next up, don't forget, Euro, bearish, wait for those buyers to debate, sell into those failures. Again, on this gold, Okay, I'm checking for a pulse right now from these buyers, right? We want those buyers to get this thing up off up off the lows again. Pretty much same plan on gold. Look for those, look for that big neon sign on gold. Buy the pullback if and when it fails, right? We'll return back to that trend. And again, here on gold, stay patient because that gold has really been on a tear here. So don't try to force it. Wait for proof on the gold. On the S&P, I'll tell you, the S&P is probably going to be the most challenging market for us tomorrow. Yeah. Again, this big round number is also the prior high of day. Be, be patient on the S&P tomorrow. Be patient. Do not force anything until we can, you know, it is, there's nothing wrong tomorrow on the S&P. There's nothing wrong here on the S&P tomorrow. If you wait patiently for this price to then go up, seller failure, and then buy those pullbacks after you see this thing really break free of that of that 2100 because guys you got plenty of room you know we're going to be likely headed back to that all-time high again you know it's in it's, it's within our sights right now and this is only a hop skip and a jump away for a measured move going higher here so what i'm trying to communicate with you is don't guess don't you know you don't need to be the first one in buying on this pullback you can wait for sellers to try to take the bait there and wait for them to fail to keep buying there I will really look forward to a retest of that gap, fill that gap, and then seller failure, right, to buy it after that fake break of the low. And then, of course, on this crude. It's going to be interesting to see what happens on crude. We haven't had more than a few days of bullishness back-to-back -back this entire year of 2015. You know, 50 bucks a barrel is only a few ticks away. You're only a few dollars up here, so... We shall see tomorrow waiting for a deep correction here on crude right now, right? That measured correction into that flag area, right? And then buy that sucker right back up. As you can see, guys, we have a clear plan for tomorrow. Now all we need to do tomorrow is, is we're going to open up our trade room at 8 a.m. Eastern time. We'll do a quick morning routine, and then we're off to follow in the plan tomorrow, waiting for proof, following the trend protecting our capital and always being disciplined to control our emotions guys and gals i want to remind you before i let you guys go today make sure you head over to schooltrade.com register for your free trial membership 
I take a lot of pride in the fact that you're going to learn more with me on my free trial than anywhere else you will on the interwebs out there. We have three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels of membership. We have members we have members from around the world. We have new traders, experienced traders. Guys, and what I, what I tell everybody is being a successful trader is like being successful in anything else. It's like opening up a combination lock. It's not enough to have the numbers. You've got to have the sequence. So whether you're brand new to day trading or you're still trying to figure out how to make consistent profit in these markets of ours, guys, we have a place for you, whether beginner, intermediate, or advanced trader, and we always have someone standing by 24-7, 365 to give you guys a hand. Guys and gals, my name is Joseph. Thanks so much for being here this week with me on the newsletter. Now, don't forget, share this information with a friend. Send me some feedback to jj at schooloftrade.com and keep in touch. Tomorrow morning, we open up our trade room at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And you know me, I'll be here with this nightly newsletter every evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Thursday like clockwork here the rest of this week. We got inventories tomorrow. We got yelling tomorrow. It's going to be another wacky one, that's for sure. Guys and gals, thanks for being here. My name is Joe. Take care of yourself. Be nice to each other out there, will ya? And I'll see you next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.